Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Sammy. It's really good to have you here. Um, well, let's just address the elephant in the video frame. And that is, I have my arm in a sling because as you can tell by this title, I got T-boned in a car accident yesterday on my way home from work. So I thought I would tell the story of what happened while it's fresh in my mind. Um, yeah, so uh, ignore my hair. I took a shower this morning and let me tell you taking a shower not using your dominant arm because I am right-handed um, sucks <laughs> and it's hard and I can't lift my arm over like I can't even like this is like the, as much as I can lift it without it hurting or not hurting as much so uh, yeah so let's just get into the story I guess um, of what happened and why I'm in this situation <laughs> So yesterday was Tuesday, I was coming home from work, I had gotten out regular time, 3.30, and I was going to go over, I was on my way over to an apartment complex in a nearby town because I wanted to get an application um, for Tyler and I, we are, again, I've mentioned this on my channel before, but we're, you know, looking into moving out soon, so I wanted to get some information about this complex, I've heard good things, I know a few people who work there, so I was so excited to go over there and get some information, application, things like that, so... I make my way over there, and I, it's about not even 10 minutes from where I work, which is also a great perk of this apartment complex, so I pull up, and I'm, like, on the road where, like, the more main road, I guess, where the apartment complex is on, so I had to stop because I was turning left into the apartment complex, so I get on that road, and that road is 30 miles an hour, just keep that in mind, 30 miles an hour road, so... I pull, I'm on the road and there's a lady who's turning in to the apartment complex in front of me. So I was stopped behind her. So eventually she gets clearance and she turns left into the apartment complex. So then it was my turn to wait and there's cars coming, cars coming. And there was a ton of people waiting by the, um, waiting by the, what am I thinking? The edge of the road for like the bus stop. Cause it was like th almost four o'clock by this point. So kids are getting off the bus ready to come home so there's a ton of people who saw the accident which is like terrifying for them to see like I can't even imagine like just seeing that because like being in it I was like oh my god so so back to what I was saying so it's my point I'm waiting to turn left into the apartment complex so I turn so I'm waiting cars are coming cars are coming cars are coming and then eventually it's clear and this road has a ton of stop signs there's like a stop sign every like 200 300 feet on this road because it's a residential area so there's a stop sign like maybe a hundred feet before this apartment complex so the person who hit me would have had to stop before they were coming up the hill towards this apartment complex if that makes sense so I you know there were no cars coming so I go to turn left and then all of a sudden smack I get t-boned and I'm like oh my god I was just hit and I was hit so hard that my airbags deployed I'll insert pictures by the way as I'm talking about what's going on but um, my airbags deployed which I've never had happen to me before the only accident I've ever been in I rear-ended somebody so it was my fault the accident I rear-ended somebody but this time it was like I got t-boned by somebody else so I was like oh my god and I like instantly was in pain I was instantly in pain, I was crying, I was sobbing, I was scared, and then one of the moms who was waiting for the bus stop, she was in her car, and she mouthed to me, she's like, are you okay, honey? Like, oh my god. And I'm like, I think so. And so, I called 911, they know exactly where I am, I told them, I was like, you know, I was T-boned in a car accident, you know, I'm okay, I think the other driver's okay, I see her walking outside, blah blah blah, you know, I need help, <laughs> I need an officer. So, they was like, okay, an officer will be right there. So then I called my mom and then I called Tyler and I was of course freaking out and crying and scared and then all of a sudden I was like wow my arm actually really hurts. And so once the uh, police officer got there he was like you know hi ma'am are you okay is everything alright? I was like you know I'm, I'm okay like I can you know I'm conscious I'm okay. He's like do you want to be seen by the rescue squad for the town? I said yes please like I'm in pain. So. Plus, like, if anytime you're in an accident, it's always good to be seen by the rescue squad if it, 
wasn't your fault in the accident, you know, like just so her insurance can cover everything. So I got seen by the rescue squad, they come over. And at this point, <coughs> I was waiting for the rescue squad to come. So I was taking pictures of my car, the damage, like one handed standing in the snow taking pictures of my car. And then the bus came for the kids that were waiting for the bus. And one of the kids walked by my car and he's like, looks like you need Geico. <laughs> It's like, yes, thank you. <laughs> and I think one of the things that irked me the most, because right after I called the police, I got out of the car to go see if the other girl was okay. You know, just as a courtesy thing that you do when you get in a car accident, you're always told to go, ch you know, make sure the other person's okay, blah, blah, blah. So I, so I go over to her, I'm like, are you okay? And she's like, oh my gosh, my car. Oh my god, look what you did to my car. And that's how she talked, too. Like, not even exaggerating. Like, she had a very, like, stereotypically ditzy voice. I don't know. And I was like, well, have you seen mine? Like, <laughs> like my car's pretty much totaled because of you. I didn't hit you. You hit me. Um, and then she was kind of ignored me. She didn't even ask if I was okay. She didn't really care about me honestly and then she just kind of waited for her friend her friend came to get her or, like came to stand with her and my stepdad came so I was in the back of the I was so the ambulance gets there they put me in the back of the ambulance we're talking you know they're examining my arm whatever everything like that I had a tow truck on the way my stepdad was on the way and um like I said I'll insert pictures of what the car looks like because it was <laughs> messed up <laughs> and so I'm in the back of the ambulance and they're examining me and stuff. They give me an ice pack and they're like, you know, we don't think it's broken. We don't think you need to go to the emergency room. You know, you can probably just go to urgent care and get an x-ray or something just to make sure that nothing's wrong, blah, blah, blah. And me not knowing any different, I was like, okay, like, you know, if I don't have to wait at the hospital for four hours, I don't want to wait at the hospital for four hours. So, you know, we did all the paperwork with them, waited for the cop to give me the um like accident report which we had to go back to the police department station to get the accident report because the printer in his car wasn't working but so then he's like oh do you have your insurance car i said like, yeah of course you know don't drive without it <laughs> and the girl the other girl who the girl who hit me was like are you supposed to have your insurance card in the car and i was like uh like if you don't know that you shouldn't be driving and she kind of just gave me a look like if you don't know that, you should not be driving a car. Like, you need to know the logistics of what happens if you get into a car accident. Like, these are all things that you're supposed to know before you get behind the wheel. Clearly, she didn't know anything. <laughs> so, you know, I was upset and everything. And so I get, we get to the police department, we get the report. So then we kind of, we go over to the urgent care, me, my mom, and my stepdad. And they're like, oh, we don't take auto accident patients here um we don't like accept auto insurance because when you get hurt in an auto accident you have to go through your auto insurance not your health insurance and i was like are you fucking kidding me like i was so mad i was in pain i was like i was like why didn't the ambulance tell like shouldn't the ambulance people know that like like what <laughs> so my mom my mom's like yeah i knew that too like that's when you said you were going to urgent care i was like they're not going to take you there so basically the ambulance wasted my time not taking me to the hospital when i could have been to the hospital quicker and got seen faster because i was coming by ambulance but um my mom's <laughs> my mom said that they probably had like a shift change or something and no one wanted to drive me because it's like half an hour away the hospital from where we were so that's that so we left the urgent care and went to the hospital on our own and I was like mind you I was driving home from work so I had my work clothes on me I didn't have my wallet I didn't have my I had my wallet I didn't have like my purse or anything and I just felt like super out of whack so we get to the hospital and of course the emergency room is like popping like they're giving something away so we waited there for like three and a half hours before even being seen which was awful and then there was a lady in there who just kept screaming and screaming and screaming at her kid. And she didn't look any older than like 20 years old. And the kid looked like 8 years old. So, I don't know. She was just, she didn't know how to be a parent. And she didn't know how to parent this kid. And she just kept screaming at him, screaming at him, screaming at him. And at one point I was so hangry and so done with just sitting there waiting. I was like, can you please quiet down your child? Can you please like stop screaming at him? Because clearly screaming at him is not doing anything. <laughs> And 
then she like went down the hallway for a while and then another person in, in the emergency room who had he had like must have cut up his hand because he had blood all over his clothes and like big gauze around his hand he was like ma'am you can you please take him down the hallway outside something like he is disrupt there's a lot of elderly people in the emergency room waiting room as well and he's like you're disrupting you're disrupting everyone who's waiting here like you need to stop <laughs> which is kind of hilarious um so they finally get back into the emergency room they put me in a gown everything like that and i you know pa comes in the physician assistant she gives me an exam she has me like raise my arm like this and like this and kind of like of course like testing different pressure points and things and it hurt so fucking bad it hurt so bad my arm is in so much pain so they're like okay let's do x-rays we don't think it's broken but it could be a rotator cuff injury and if it's a rotator cuff injury um you'll see on the x-rays the bone spurs will be thinner in certain places and that indicates to us that it's a ligament bone or a ligament injury so it's like okay so we go and take the x-rays we i walk down there take the x-rays which hurt so bad because i had to position your arm in certain ways to get the right picture oh my god it hurts so bad <laughs> so and um so we take the x-rays i go back we're waiting she comes in and she says yep just what i thought she's like the bone spurs are thin in this one area so it's probably a rotator cuff injury um you know, you're gonna need to follow up with an orto orthopedic doctor and i was like yay great okay so they gave me this sling here to kind of just like position my arm the best way that I can and just kind of make it more comfortable um which I'm so uncomfortable and in pain like I can't I'm right-handed so doing anything with my right arm hurts so I can't even like like making breakfast this morning was awful like pouring cereal and stuff in my left hand and there's things I don't do with my left hand I took a shower um today which was so painful so painful but I mean I have really no other choice <laughs> like I have to get things done I have to still function as a human being and I'm home alone today so like I had to do it by myself so I have to be out of work for a minimum of three days and as you guys know I'm a preschool teacher I work with children and I work from infants up to preschool so I'm lifting kids I'm changing diapers I'm burping I'm feeding I'm teaching I'm hugging I'm like I can't lift any kids or lift anything more than a few pounds like my arm she said like I can't lift anything over 10 pounds and every kid is over 10 pounds so even the infants like so I can't I'm like useless at work and I can't just wear this at work you know like I can't I can't even clean like <laughs> it's kind of irritating and frustrating to not be able to do anything that you know you can do but that's that so I have an orthopedic appointment tomorrow to go and see um, what the next step would be. The physician assistant in the ER said that I will most likely need an MRI so that they can see all the ligaments and everything, which kind of terrifies me, those little MRI laying box things. Um, but yeah, that's, I guess, the next step. Um, I might possibly need to have surgery since it's my rotator cuff and that is like a thinner part of your ligaments and it's a easier part to pull. And if you don't fix it, it can get worse and worse over time. So I might have to get surgery on it. Um, I really hope not. I hope it can just be like PT or something. But this like stupid girl hits me with her car, like messes up my life for the time being. And her car barely had anything on it. Literally had her bumper was like moved a little. That was it. Like of course that's how it always is right like but so I don't know if they're gonna total my car or I'm gonna get this car repaired because I do lease this car and it's like the lowest model of a Honda Fit that you could get because the payments are lower and I don't really need anything more extravagant like it, it's just a commuter car for me really so I might be getting a new car <laughs> we'll see um you know I didn't really need this extra expense paying my deductible through the insurance I'm a little pissed off about it but I mean I'm glad the situation is what it is it's just my rotator cuff you know I didn't get knocked unconscious I didn't have to be like cut out of the car she didn't flip my car um she did hit me probably going about 45 50 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour road because my airbags deploy like your airbags don't deploy if you're going 30 miles an hour so that's that that's what happened um so that is why I'm wearing a sling and my traumatic car accident experience um 
yeah, I don't really have much else to say. I guess I'll keep you guys updated on what's going on with the orthopedic, if I have to get surgery, PT, whatever. Of course, I'll keep you guys updated. Um, yeah, and until the next video, um, drive safe. I love you, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!